Okay, there's, there's a lot of uh, misunderstanding about, about the, what a diagnostic test actually means. And this is in our veterinarians in Louisiana, as well as the uh, producers. And so I'd like to, to put my two cents toward trying to tell you guys so that y'all don't have the problems that we've had for 50 something years of explaining what the diagnostic tests really mean. This is a stained red blood cell. A stained red blood cell, and as you, whoops. As you, can, as you can see these dark purple spots, those are the anaplasma marginale organism. There's some of those things in there that are not. The ones that are located on the center are, some of them that are, are stained blue or purple, are actually pieces of dye that from the stain. So uh, I get a lot of people that will send me in slides uh, that you can't really read and they'll be covered with these things and there's no anaplasma at all in it. It's just pieces of dye. So, but they think that this cow died and from anaplasmosis and to hear the producers tell it, Every cow that dies in the summertime in Louisiana dies from anaplasmosis, and, and that's not really the case. Okay, this, I'm gonna, they, we have already talked about most of these things that my talk was gonna be uh, designed to do, but so we'll go to something else. Okay, this is actually an animal that, was, that we infected, and we let it run its course. As you will see, over here, I think this starts at day 14 post uh, inoculation of the anaplasmosis organism. I think we put uh, 10 to the third organism infected red blood cells into this animal. And this is pretty much what we find just about every time we do it. If we want to make a lot, if we want to shorten down this 21 day process, we just put more infected cells in. But this is about what you would see in a cow out in the feel that might die from anaplasmosis. From the time she's infected, day zero, till about 21 days, the packed cell volume, which is up here on the top, if I can get the laser going. Well, that was pretty good. Oh, there it is. The packed cell volume remains relatively constant. So what this, this means is that, well, first of all, let me tell you that once the cell becomes infected with the anaplasm organism, that red blood cell is gonna be destroyed. Because the same filtering mechanism that filters old or worn out red blood cells out of your body every day and out of the animal's body every day are filtered out because they have a problem. And they filter those organisms out and they destroy them. Okay, so any cell that becomes infected is gonna be destroyed, and this will be a little important a little later on. Okay, at about the 21st day, and as you can see down here, the, which one is, this bottom graph down here, we did, a, the, we did blood cell counts on, on all these days, and we were looking for the, uh, the little organism in the stained red blood cell. And for 21 days, we couldn't find any. We couldn't find any that we were sure that were actually anaplasm organisms. But at the 21st day, we started picking up an increase in the number of uh, infected red blood cells. And this is the percentage over here on, the, on this other side represents, represents also the pack cell volume and also the uh, infected red blood cell percentage. So for, for 21 days, there was basically no cells, and then it goes into a logarithmic phase. And this logarithmic phase goes up, and this is one of the most important things that you need to know about treating anaplasmosis. You see no signs of anemia in a bovine until they lost 50% of their red blood cells. And by the time that happens, if you look over here, They've got enough, they can have it from 25 to 60% of their red blood cells 
that are infected and those red blood cells are gonna be destroyed. And it's, if you see this red line here, there's no clinical signs up until this point. At that point, you get clinical signs of anemia. All those signs and symptoms that they talked about this morning, every one of them right on cue that they gave. You will see clinical signs. This animal, two days after he showed his first signs, he was dead from anaplasmosis. And this is what uh, most farmers that are unaware of what anaplasmosis does to cattle, this is what they find at first. They find a dead cow, okay? All right. <coughs> this, this is a, uh, is a sign or a, a, a slide that we want to talk about uh, there's two or three things that happen <clears throat> that don't, don't happen in there that didn't happen on that other one. Out here at the end of, end of about the uh, uh, 29th day, <clears throat> out here at about the end of the 29th day, the anaplast organism multiplying has begun, to, has grown up to the point where that it has provoked the immune system. It takes about, so you gotta figure about nine ba days back from that, because it takes about nine days for the immune system to become provoked, and once it becomes provoked, well then it will produce uh, an antibody, or cell-mediated immunity. And at that point, you get, a, at that point you get immune clearance, because whenever they, uh, Red blood cell is wrapped up with an organism that has an antibody on it attached to it. It gets one trip through the filtering mechanism and it's gone. And so this is immune clearance. In one day, they can go from maybe 40% infected red blood cells to no infected red blood cells and a dead cow. Not all animals die from anaplasmosis. Some of them live over. This particular one did. but. If you look at that, if you look at this, you can see that she is starting to, to come back. But it can take an animal, a cow, it can take her up to 160 days whenever she gets down anemic close to the single digit. It can take her up to, to 120 days to build her blood back up to where it should be normally. And that her condition does not build up that fast. It takes a while longer than that for it to build up. So that whenever you have a calf or a cow that has anaplasmosis, and if she's pregnant, she's gonna abort. Whenever she aborts, if she has, the fetus is gonna be uh, not a term fetus. It'll be a, usually it's about a, uh, anything from a, about a four month fetus up usually. That, and they just simply can't get the oxygen through the umbilical cord that they need to maintain uh, their uh, cells. So they die and they're aborted. Uh, so what happens whenever you see that cow, whenever she comes in in the fall, whenever you're looking, you pregnancy check her, she's thin, she's open. Even though she lived, she's something that you're gonna cull. So that is a great loss whether she dies or not. The fact that she Quit giving milk also is a great loss to you because she's got a calf out there that she was nursing that will weigh, be lightweight in the fall whenever you sell or get ready to sell those calves. So those are some losses that people don't sometimes don't re realize. Okay, over here this slide shows that the first uh, 21 days you're unable to diagnose it with a blood smear. From about this point when it starts into the logarithmic stage uh, to immune clearance, you can find the red blood cells. This is roughly about a week. After that, you can't diagnose it with a, a, uh, with a blood smear because all of the cells have been immune cleared. But whenever you say immune cleared, this tells you that there's been an, some immunity gathered there so that they have an antibody. So then the card test, the uh, uh, old ELISA, the competitive ELISA will be positive on that and it will be positive for the rest of that cow's life. 
it does not tell you any, if you get a positive test, serological test, or a PCR test, the only thing it tells you is that that animal sometime in its life had experienced anaplasma and reacted to it by making an immune system for the serological ones. And the, the organism, as it stays in the animal forever as a car carrier, the PCR will be positive. PCRs will be positive back over here from probably the second or first day to the second or third day. Uh, and it may be positive from what was injected into them by the horsefly or the uh, uh, tick or maybe the producer or the veterinarian, whoever in, didn't change needles. Okay. Uh, we're going on unable to diagnose. Uh, by day 30, you're unable to diagnose it with a blood smear because the cells have all been cleared. Uh, and for the lifetime, then the CLIs of the complement fixation and the PCR tests are, uh, will all be positive for that animal. Uh, in our hands, we have, in the 53 years that I've been doing this, I've tried everything that ever came out about a treatment regime for uh, anaplasmosis with tetracycline. And I have never been able to clear a single animal. When I go back to see if they were cleared, Injecting them into a splenectomized calf, the calf always came down with anaplasmosis. <clears throat> okay, vaccines. This is our vaccine. It's, uh, we came out with this in the, uh, like, uh, the early 90s. We had it made and had it pretty much established that it would be protective and not, and we have used it against every pregnant cow that we could to see if we'd give NI like Fort Di old Fort Dodge's Anaplasvac did. And we never had a case of, of neonatal isoerythrolysis in vaccinated calf. There has been over two million doses of our vaccine that have been uh, used. And there has never been a reported case of neonatal isoerythrolysis to me. This is Fort Dodge's uh, Anaplasvac. Now then, they came out, Bill Brock at Oklahoma State, uh, he was working with it whenever I was in uh, veterinary school and we worked with, with him on his cows. And uh, the vaccine uh, was made from infected red blood cells just like ours is. But if you look over here on the left, See that pellet, that rust-colored pellet? Well, that rust color comes from the red blood cells that's in it. Whenever those red blood cells are injected into a cow that has a different blood type from that, her immune system sees those as foreign and makes an antibody against it, against those red blood cells. If she has a calf that inherits the red blood cells that were the same type as it was in that vaccine, probably from the sire, then whenever it takes its first uh, drink of colostrum, it starts killing its red blood cells. And whenever this first happened, we thought at first, we thought, well, we vaccinated the cows first, you know, and went through the whole summer in the fall through the anaplasmosis season. And we had, I mean, it did a great job of protecting the cows. We had no anaplasmosis in those herds that we vaccinated. Then they started calving. And whenever they started calving, we had all kind of calves that were being born, we thought were being born dead. But when we post them, we found that they had their stomachs were full of colostrum and from that we traced back and, and we came up with the real culprit was the red blood cells that was in that vaccine. Fort Dodge lyophilized it and mixed it with this uh, adjuvant, which is an oil adjuvant, pretty similar to what we use. And whenever they injected it in there, it was just certain that if, if the cow had the, the same blood type as was, or a different blood type from that, what was the red blood cells in that vaccine, she was going to have a calf if it inherited the 
uh, red blood cells of the sire are different from hers, then she would have a case of neonatal isoerythrolysis. Ours, we've never, as I said, we've never had a reported case of it. This right here is uh, Malincrot. We licensed our product to Malincrot, and Malincrot produced it for three years. They had no problems with it. The only problem that they had is the same problem that I had when I first started selling uh, it. On the bottle, it very specifically says, give it sub-Q in the neck. And this dairy in Texas uh, had a herringbone type milk parlor, and they couldn't get to the to the tail they wanted to vaccinate it in the barn. And so, I mean, they could get to the tail, but not the neck. So they gave it back there by the tail head. And there's a fat pad back there. This vaccine is in a two oil adjuvant. And if you put that in that, that fat pad, that oil is removed out of this for such a long, over such a long period of time, it probably never gets to the antigenic dose that they need to uh, respond to the, uh, the antigen. So we went over and we vaccinated them correctly and that ended their problem. Uh, Malincrot sold it for three years, as I said, and had no problems with it. They were purchased by Shearing Plow. Shearing Plow had had an anaplasmosis vaccine at the, about that same time that they had to remove from the market because they had some problems with it. And at that time, they didn't want another anaplasmosis vaccine. They sold the stock that Malincrot had produced and they turned the licensing agreement back to us, the university. And if you try to find, if you can find anything about that vaccine on the internet, please let me know. Because I don't know how it all, all of the information suddenly disappeared. Okay. This is, can you, this animal was vaccinated and then was given uh, a lethal dose of anaplasmosis cells. Can, do you see anything that's different there? Remember I said the important thing for you to know is that a cow shows no signs of anemia until they've lost 50% of their red blood cells. Can you see where the red, what? <coughs> about 30 so it did lose some red blood cells you know but that these animals never show any signs of anemia their milk production stays the same and it's just a it's just a <coughs> subclinical infection that they have and over a period of time it will build itself back up to the, to the normal level but they never lose any condition they never give stop giving milk uh, and if, if you look at the number, uh, this, this graph looks kind of high, but over here on this side, on the right-hand side, we gave the number of infected cells that you get. The average, this right here, is the average of our efficacy study on the vaccine that we use. And as you can see, the, the up here, I guess it got just a little bit below one, because there would be one. Okay. So the vaccine, what people ask me what the vaccine does, and I tell them that all it does, they say, will it keep them from becoming infected? No vaccine will keep any animal from a, you or I or any other animal from becoming infected if they are susceptible and it's not species uh, specific. If you know, they will, they will, they will all become infected. It's what happens after they become infected that counts. You get a flu shot every year. Flu shots this past year was 30 percent effective. I don't think any of us would be willing to use to buy a vaccine for a cow that would be 30 percent effective, but we use it on ourselves. Okay, let me tell you now a little bit about our vaccine. <laughs> I'll go back up so you can look at the pictures. By the way, Plasvac 
was made with the same strain. We gave them the strain. We helped them take it through the USDA licensing process. It went through there, okay, got, got licensed as a, a fully licensed, biological licensed uh, vaccine. And then after they quit, we have never had a facility that would pass the USDA requirements to make the vaccine in. For one thing, you can't have a production facility that research has been going on in. And we made it on the LSU campus in, the la in our lab there. Uh, there's research going all around it, you know, so, so they never allowed us, to, we didn't qualify, but we have now, we are now in the process of putting the equipment in the lab and we hope to take it back through the USDA licensing process as soon as we can get everything in the lab and get it running. So, but this is our vaccine. As you can see, if you remember the Anaplast vaccine that Fort Dodge made had a red rusty color. Our vaccine, we bought it in 10 and 50 dose plastic vials. And you can see it's, it's about the color of milk. There is no red blood cells. We did do a, a process that removes all of the red blood cell antigens from it. Uh, the <clears throat> a little bit about the vaccine itself. We recommend that all mature animals in a herd be vaccinated for anaplasmosis. And we recommend any replacer animal that's going to be on the farm that will be 14 months of age by the end of the anaplasmosis season in your area that you start vaccinating them. If they're not that old, then that's here it's, well, I think here it was year round this past year, wasn't it? And so at any rate, but ordina in ordinary years, your anaplasmosis season probably ought to end by the end of November. So probably you need to vaccinate all replacer animals, start vaccinating them uh, whenever you vaccinate the rest of the herd. Uh, the, as I said, the vaccine comes in a two oil adjuvant. Oil adjuvants all require a 60 day slaughter withdrawal. You're not going to put a, a, an expensive vaccine in a cow that you're going to get rid of in 10 days. Okay. The vaccine comes in a bottle ready to use. The vaccine is heat stable to environmental temperatures. We don't ship it on ice. We do recommend that once you uh, open the vial of vaccine that if it is allowed to warm up, you will probably have not taken mold spore into that vial. And if it warms up, the bottom warms up, it will start to uh, grow the, the mold and then that will spoil the rest of your vial. So if you ever open a vial of it, well, keep it cold. We recommend that you keep it in the refrigerator in your clinic, not because it couldn't survive sitting on a shelf. When we were developing it, I carried a bottle of it around in the back of my clinic truck with no heating or cooling, and it was just as good at the end of that year as when we put it in the bottle. So the reason that we tell everybody to put it in their refrigerator whenever they get it in their clinic is we had a large producer in Florida. They had about 30,000 cows, and they bought a ton of the vaccine. Ten years after they bought the first lot of it, they found it sitting on a shelf. $8,000 worth of it was, by that time, was no longer any good. So do, we do recommend, you don't go to, you don't look for vaccine on a shelf. You look in a refrigerator for it, so keep, keep it there. Uh, we give, we recommend that the animals need two doses of it. It's a killed vaccine. The second dose is to be given 28 days after the first dose. This is a protocol that we worked out. And people ask me, can I wait a little longer? And I would say that if you want the best possible results, you give it to it in 28 days. But if you're gonna wait over, if you're gonna wait over 60 days to give it, you probably won't get the anamnestic response that you should get out of the immune system. Because what we're trying to do is build a population of immune memory cells so that when the animal becomes infected, it will be uh, safe and saved. Okay. Uh,
Oh, it's a 2cc dose, and we recommend that the 2cc doses be given with a small syringe because large syringes do not give uh, an accurate enough dose. You'll wind up wasting the stuff. It's too expensive to waste. Uh, we wholesale it to veterinarians. We have a price that we wholesale it to them. They don't like us to give that price out. Uh, and uh, <laughs> and so, so I won't hear. But they, because I don't know what they're going to charge you for it anyway. They mark it up some. Uh, but I can tell you this, it is a whole lot cheaper than losing cows with anaplasmosis. Uh, the vaccine, as I said, has never caused any problems. You get a slight sight swelling uh, where you inject it, uh, and that goes away in three to seven days. And outside of that, you get good protection if the animal has an immune system that is good. The only animals that I know that have been vaccinated that have died of anaplasmosis were old, poor doing cows who obviously had a compromised immune system. And last year, for the first time, we had some young animals that died. And the deal on that was this guy had order buyers to buy him. He wanted 150 uh, breeding age heifers. And so they went to every sale barn, I guess that's who they could find, and bought the cattle that he asked. And he, he boxed them, put them all together, and vaccinated them. Vaccinated them for everything known to man, I guess, you know, because he was really interested. I mean, he was, he was new in the business. He wanted to do everything right. He vaccinated them, he vaccinated them properly, and four of them came down with anaplasmosis and died. And so I, we were trying to figure out what it was wrong. And I said, did, you know, ask him, I said, well, were any of them sick or did, uh, did any of them have viral infections, I guess is what I asked him. And he said, no. And I thought a while and I said, did any of them have snotty noses when you vaccinated them? He said, you know, he said, come to think of it, since you mentioned that, he said, about three weeks after we got them, he said nearly all of them are, had snotty noses. And I said, well, there's your viral infection. He said, you vaccinated in that time? Yes. <laughs> so I said, well, that they will, viral infections will compromise the immune system on young animals for a while, but then it will come back after they clear themselves up. So those are the only animals that I know of that haven't been re, uh, protected against clinical cases of anaplasmosis. Thank you guys for listening. <laughs>